Hello everyone. Today I am Alicia Raza with my friend Karan Singh Manwal are going to present on the topic pre-formulation. This is a kind of an overview of the topics which are included in pre-formulation. The contents included in this module is introduction to pre-formulation, objectives of pre-formulation, physical properties, chemical properties, applications of pre-formulation studies. First of all, we must have an idea about the topic pre-formulation. What is pre-formulation? Pre-formulation is a proactive phase that deals with the physico-chemical properties and transformation of a new chemical entity into safe, effective and most importantly stable pharmaceutical formulations. Goals and objectives of pre-formulation are to determine physico-chemical properties of a drug entity, to determine kinetics and stability of a drug, to determine the compatibility of a drug with excipients and to increase drug bioavailability. The physical properties which are included in pre-formulation are physical form that is crystal and amorphous, particle size, particle shape, flow properties, solubility profile which includes pKa, pH and partition coefficient and the last physical property is polymorphism. First physical property that is physical form, physical form is of two types that is amorphous and crystalline. Amorphous has irregular pattern of ions, molecules or atoms in a solid whereas reg uh, crystalline has regular and repeating arrangement of components in a solid. Amorphous melt over a range of temperature whereas crystalline have a sharp melting point. Amorphous has no definite heat of fusion whereas crystalline has definite heat of fusion. Amorphous include examples as glass. Crystalline examples include diamond. And amorphous are also called as isotropic and crystalline are also called as an isotropic. Here is a picture showing the difference between crystalline and amorphous form. It is showing that crystalline has regular and repeating pattern of particles inside the structure and amorphous has irregular pattern inside it. Analytical methods for the characterization of solid forms. Few methods we have mentioned here are microscopy, fusion methods that is hot stage microscopy, differential scanning calorimetry that is DSC or DTA, infrared spectros spectroscopy, X-ray powder diffraction, scanning electron microscopy that is SEM, TGA that is thermogravimetric analysis and last one is dissolution and solubility analysis. The applications of DTA and DSC in pre-formulation studies are to determine the purity of a sample, to determine the number of polymorphs and to determine the ratio of each polymorph, to determine the heat of solvation and to determine the thermal degradation of a drug or excipient. Moving on, we have another physical property that is particle size. Particle size can be called to range from coarse to very coarse and to fine particles and so on. Question can arise here in our mind that is why is particle size important in pre-formulation? Particle size influences surface area and porosity of particle and hence has an impact on bioavailability, suspendability, lack of crittiness, dissolution rate, penetrability, uniform distribution, effectiveness and last shelf life of a drug. There are various methods which can be used to determine particle size. Starting from sieving that is for particle size range from 50 to 150 micrometer, microscopy 0.2 to 100 micrometer, sedimentation rate method in which we have Andreessen pipette method and the particle range is between 1 to 200 micrometer, laser holography the particle range is for 1.4 to 100 micrometer, cascade impaction and the last one that is light energy diffraction is for particle size 0.5 to 500 micrometer. Moving on, another physical property that is particle shape. How a particle appear in its shape? A question here is why is particle shape important in pre-formulation? Particle shape influences the surface area, flow of particle, compaction and packing properties of particle. Spherical shape is considered as maximum surface area and hence better dissolution and absorption. Another physical property that is powder flow property. Powder flow properties can be evaluated by measurements of two parameters that is bulk density and angle of repose. Angle of repose is the steepest angle from the horizontal plane and the formula for angle of repose is tan theta is equals to h by r. Where theta is equals to angle of repose and r is e h is equals to height of radius and r is equals to h is equals to height of pile and r is equals to radius of pile. 
Changes in particle size and shape are generally very apparent. An increase in crystal size or a more uniform shape will lead to smaller angle of repose and a smaller Karst index. Here is a table showing the flow character that is dependent on two parameters. The parameters are Karst index and angle of repose. For Karst index 10 or less than 10, the angle of repose that is ranging from 25 to 30 degree, we have flow character that is excellent. For Karst index 11 to 15 percent and angle of repose 31 to 35 degree, flow character will be good. For Karst index 16 to 20 percent, angle of repose 36 to 40 degree, flow will be set fair and so on. Formulas for compressibility index and Hosner's ratio are measurement of free flowing powder by compressibility is also known as Karst index. Karst index is equal to tap density minus pore density divided by tap density into 100. And this method is simple, fast and popular method of predicting powder flow character. And the formula for Hosner's ratio is tap density by bulk density. We have another physical property that is solubility determination. Solubility determination is actually, it affects bioavailability of drug, the rate of drug release into the dissolution medium and the consequently the therapeutic efficiency of the pharmaceutical product. Here is a table showing the number of parts of solvent required for one part of solute. For very soluble parts required is less than 10. For freely soluble parts required is between 1 to 10. For soluble the parts required is ranging from 10 to 30 and so on. Dissociation constant. Since majority of drugs are either weakly acidic or weakly basic, the drugs under dissociation undergoes dissociation in their echo solution. A weak acid will ionize mostly in alkaline pH while a weak base will ionize in an acidic medium. The unionized drug is more lipid soluble and thus readily absorbed. At a particular pH, the relative concentration of unionized and ionized species in a drug solution can be estimated with the help of henderson hasselbalch equation, which is for acidic drugs, pH is equal to pKa plus log of concentration of ionized drug divided by unionized drug. For basic drugs, pH is equal to pKa plus log unionized drug divided by ionized drug. There are various uses of henderson hasselbalch equation. It is used to determine pKa value, to determine solubility of any pH provided that the intrinsic solubility and pKa are known, to facilitate selection of suitable salt forming compound, to predict the solubility and pH properties of the salt. Methods to determine pKa value are potentiometric method, conductivity method, dissolution rate method and spectrophotometric method. PKA of the drug, which is also dissociation or ionization constant, pH at which half of the substance is ionized and half is unionized. pH of the medium affects ionization of drug. Weakly acids are best absorbed in stomach, whereas weakly bases are best absorbed in intestine. Partition coefficient. Partition coefficient is the measurement of a drug's lipophilicity and an indication to check its ability to pass through the cell membrane. It is defined as the ratio between unionized drug distributed between the organic and aqueous phase at equilibrium. The diagram is showing partition coefficient. A question can arise here is what is the role of partition coefficient in pre-formulation studies? Oil water partition coefficient gives the idea about drug's ability to cross the lipid membrane. Hence, lipophilic and hydrophilic balance is one of the most important contributing factor for optimum drug absorption and delivery. There are various methods to determine partition coefficient, shake flask method, chromatographic method that is HPTLC and TLC and the last one is counter current and filter probe method. Another question, what, what does a high partition coefficient mean? The greater the solubility of a drug, the higher its partition coefficient and the higher the partition coefficient, the higher the permeability of the cell membrane to that particular drug. Another and the last physical property included in pre-formulation is polymorphism. First of all, we must know about polymorphism. When a substance exists in more than one crystalline form, the different form designated as polymorphs and the phenomena is termed as polymorphism. There are two types of polymorphs in our course, stable polymorph and metastable polymorph. Stable polymorph represents the lowest energy state and has highest melting point and least aqueous solubility. 
whereas metal stable form represent the highest energy state and have lower melting point and high echo solubility so metal stable form converted to the stable form due to their higher energy state metal stable form shows better bioavailability and therefore are more preferred in formulations there are two types of pairs in polymorphism that is enantiotropic and monotropic in enantiotropic we have reversible phase transition whereas in monotropic pair we have irreversible phase transition the metal stable to stable conversion is same in both enantiotropic and monotropic pair the transition is endothermic in enantiotropic pair and it is exothermic in monotropic pair in enantiotropic pair lower melting form is thermodynamically stable below the transition temperature and higher melting point form is stable above the transition temperature whereas in monotropic pair higher melting form is always thermodynamically stable form we must know the significance of studying polymorphism different polymers exhibits different solubility therapeutic efficiency and stability the desired forms consistently manufactured the effect of pharmaceutical manipulations are understood examples granulation milling milling and compression and the effect of storage condition on the dosage form can be evaluated and predicted example crystal growth in suspension in creams methods to determine polymorphism are optical crystallography hot stage microscopy and x ray diffraction methods now move on to chemical properties we have five different chemical properties in preformulation studies starting from hydrolysis oxidation reduction racemization and polymerization goals of understanding chemical properties are path of degradation can be understood rate of degradation can be predicted stability with ph temperature light and oxygen can be studied shelf life of formulation and chemical and physical stability can be known first chemical properties hydrolysis hydrolysis involves reaction of a molecule with water resulting in cleavage of a chemical bond within the molecule we have two types of hydrolysis in our syllabus ester hydrolysis for example caffeine with benzocaine and amide hydrolysis in which amide acid plus amine reaction occurs examples included in amide hydrolysis are chloramphenicol and niacinamide it involves nucleophilic attack of labile groups example lactam ester amide imide when this attack is by a solvent other than water then it is known as solvolysis it generally follows second order kinetics as there are two reacting species water and active pharmaceutical ingredient other chemical property is oxidation it is a very common pathway for drug degradation in both liquid and solid formulation oxidation occurs in two ways of auto oxidation free radical chain process functional groups having high susceptibility towards oxidation are alkenes substituted aromatic groups that are that is toluene phenols anisole ethers thioethers and amines the factors affecting oxidation are oxygen concentration light hydrogen and hydroxyl ion concentration and temperature moving on we have chemical property that is reduction when an atom or compound gains an electron its charge gets reduced the process of reduction is almost always coupled with the process of oxidation here is a representation which shows loss of electron is oxidation and gain of gain of electron is actually reduction moving on we have fourth phase chemical property that is racemization it is the process of interconversion from one isomer to another isomer which is having different pharmacokinetics as well as different pharmacological and toxicological effect it can defined in other words optically active drugs is converted its an enantiomer racemization follows first order kinetics examples included in racemization are levoform of epinephrine is 15 to 20 times more active than dextroform levoform of cetirizine is more active than dextroform amphetamine is often dispensed as racemic salts while the more active dextroamphetamine is reserved for refractory cases or more severe indications another and the last example included here is methadone of which one isomer has activity as an opioid agonist and the other as an nmda antagonist significance of racemization is the configurational study of a drug is related to racemization factors influencing the racemization is temperature solvent catalyst and presence or absence of
the last chemical property we have in pre-formulation studies is polymerization any process in which relatively small molecules called monomers combine chemically to produce a very large chain like or network molecule called a polymer types of polymerization reactions are addition polymerization that is also known as chain reaction and condensation polymerization that is also known as step reaction the techniques of polymerization are bulk polymerization solution polymerization and emulsion polymerization moving on we have a classification in pre free formulation that is bcs the full form for bcs is biopharmaceutics classification system it is actually a scientific framework for classifying drugs on the basis of two parameters one is solubility and other is aqueous permeability in this classification we have four classes based on solubility and permeability along with their examples class 1 has high solubility high permeability and examples are metoprolol and propranolol class 2 has low solubility whereas high permeability and examples are nifedipine and naproxen class 3 has high solubility and low permeability and examples are cimetidine and metformin class 4 has low solubility and low permeability and examples are texol and chlorothiazol chlorothiazol bcs in bioweaver the term bioweaver means to achieve way of wave of for carrying out costly and time consuming bioavailability and bioequivalence studies bcs provides bioweavers for class 1 2 and 3 drug with some specifications The US FDA BCS guide guidance recommends bioweaver for class 1 drugs or an immediate release drug product. Now the last part included in this video is applications of free formulation studies. Free formulation studies are very useful in the study of ADME of a drug. ADME that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. the release of drug from its dosage form can also be studied in this preformulation other applications are preformulation studies enhance drug bioavailability and the stability and solubility of a drug can be predicted by preformulation studies here are the references from which the content has been taken in this video if anyone has any doubt or anyone wants any detail regarding any topic or methods including pre formulation then they can go through lekman or the link provided here thank you so much for your patient listening